In this video, we're going to look more into the properties of chemical shift in NMR spectra and the connection between chemical shift and magnetic shielding. So we have defined chemical shift in the previous video as the frequency at which a given proton absorbs radiation and undergoes a transition between its spin energy levels, minus the frequency at which uh, tetramethylsilane, its protons, undergo the same transition, divided by the frequency at which the spectrometer is operating. All that times 10 to the 6th, thus giving us a unitless value times 10 to the 6th, so our units is parts per million. So TMS is defined to be the reference value. Uh, tetramethylsilane has a chemical shift of zero parts per million. Our magnetic field due to chemical shielding, or magnetic shielding, uh, in the Z direction is equal to the default magnetic field that the machine generates times 1 minus our shielding constant, which depends on the local electronic environment around our nucleus. This is the effective magnetic field our nucleus feels. This transition frequency is equal to uh, gamma, our magnetogyric ratio, times the z component of the magnetic field divided by 2 pi. And this gamma magnetogyric ratio is equal to the nuclear factor times the nuclear magneton, which is a nucleus-specific constant times the charge divided by 2 times the mass of the nucleus. Okay, let's consider that we have two different uh, protons in a molecule, and they're uh, distinguishable from one another. So these will absorb, these will absorb uh, a radiation to undergo resonance at two different frequencies. So let's say we have proton 1, and it undergoes a transition at a frequency nu1. So according to this, this is going to be gamma uh, times, and we're going to BZ substitute in B0 over 2 pi times 1 minus sigma 1. So take this equation here, substitute in uh, this value of BZ up there, you get this equation. And similarly, nucleus 2 is going to have the same prefactor times 1 minus sigma 2, its shielding constant. So now we can look at what is the difference in the chemical shift of these two nuclei with different shielding constants. How are, these, how are the shielding constant differences and the chemical shift differences related? So we can define the quantity delta 1 minus delta 2. So that's going to equal, well, we're going to have 10 to the 6th times we have nu1 minus nu TMS over nu spec minus nu2 minus nu TMS over nu spec. Okay, so we have nu TMS in both of these, so that cancels out. TM, this is just a reference value that tells us where it is relative to some standard nucleus, the protons in TMS. All right, so we got that. So this is going to give us equals 10 to the 6 times nu1 minus nu2 over nu spec. Okay, so we have that. And now continuing this line onward, going forward, we're going to have that these are going to be equal to nu1 minus nu2. Uh, they both have this prefactor of gamma b0 over 2 pi. Nu spec is on the bottom for both of those. We'll pull that out. And now we're going to have the difference between these two here. They're b one has a 1 minus sigma 1, one has 1 minus sigma 2. So 1 minus sigma 1 minus 1 minus sigma 2, the 1s are going to cancel and we're going to get sigma 2 minus sigma 1. So just substitute in these values here and you should get sigma 2 minus sigma 1. Because of those minus signs, our signs now flipped, we went from 1, 2 to 2, 1. And our 10 to the 6th uh, factor is there as well times 10 to the 6th. Okay, but what about our uh, default magnetic field here? So you might recall from 
other our previous video as well that B naught is equal to 2 pi times the frequency of the spectrometer divided by gamma times 1 minus sigma for our for a given nucleus so this is different for each of our nuclei but we can make use of the fact that since sigma is typically around 10 to the minus fifth that means that 1 minus sigma is approximately 1 so this denominator here we can approximate 1 minus sigma as approximately 1 so this denominator is going to go away we're not going to have a different denominator in each of these cases and what that is going to give us is that b naught is going to be equal to 2 pi times frequency of the spectrometer divided by gamma so now we substitute in our b naught up into our difference between these chemical shifts now delta 1 minus delta 2 is equal to we're going to have gamma over 2 pi times we have b naught sorry you want to use this line over here I was looking at the wrong line we're going to have yep gamma over 2 pi new spec and substitute in for b naught this value up here which is going to be 2 pi new spec over and we're going to get a gamma on the bottom but you'll notice that that substitution because uh, the frequency of the spectrometer and the magnetic field are directly related to one another those are directly proportional everything here is just going to end up canceling out so if I write the rest of this here we're going to have our 10 to the sixth sigma 2 minus sigma 1 left so gamma and gamma cancel 2 pi and 2 pi cancel new spec and new spec cancel so what this tells us is that the chemical shift and the magnetic shielding are actually directly proportional to one another we have delta 1 minus delta 2 is equal to and you could either leave it like this as sigma 2 minus sigma 1 or you could put out, pull out the minus sign minus 10 to the sixth sigma 2 minus sigma 1 so if you multiply your if you multiply your magnetic shielding constants by minus 1 million minus 10 to the sixth that'll be the difference in the chemical shift between them uh, so fit as long as they are sufficiently close that this approximation is valid which is almost always true so our chemical shifts here are directly proportional to one another so it actually tells us right about the magnetic shielding if we know what the difference in chemical shift is and which is readily calc uh, which we can readily calculate based off of any given spectrum that we should measure okay so what this means is that since uh, chemical shift is almost always greater than one in proton spectra so new H it's greater than one almost always so that implies since our chemical shift is almost always greater than one that implies that the shielding of TMS is greater than the shielding of our given proton nucleus almost always as well which is again why TMS is chosen as a great reference signal because it is not only highly absorbing uh, very strong signal very non-reactive but it is uh, it is, absorbs at a higher frequency and thus a lower chemical shift than almost any other proton nucleus in typical organic molecules Oh, sorry this should be since it's greater than zero okay so down here I've got a NMR spectrum plotted out which is some sample spectrum for some uh, unknown and un uh, given molecule 
So we have TMS, the TMS signal at zero ppm. Notice that the parts per million, the chemical shift increases going to the left because uh, the magnetic field is chosen to be increasing to the right. And the magnetic field and the frequency are increasing this way and the shielding is increasing this way. So the, the uh, chemical shift is increasing this way to the left. All right, so we got the regions where you have some typical chemical shifts observed from about 0 0.8 to the low twos. That's where we would have typical alkanes, CH3s, CH2s, those type of groups. Uh, next group I got where you have kind of this about two to four range. That's where you have the proton, which is next door to some kind of halide group. So alkyl halides will have a proton which appears in that kind of region. Uh, now, as I said, more and more electron withdrawing groups will decrease the shielding and thus increase the chemical shift. So this is more electron withdrawing, so the shielding decreased and the chemical shift increased. Uh, next one down the line, if you have a proton attached to a carbon which is next to an ether group, then that is an even higher chemical shift. Next one in orange here, alcohols. And then starting at, to get to very high chemical shifts, sometimes going above five, are the protons attached to the double bonds in alkenes. And some of the highest chemical shifts that you typically see for protons, uh, getting, getting near the high end of the spectrum, would be aromatics. And these two actually aren't more electronegative than any of these groups over here. It's just that there are other effects going on due to all of those electrons being in a ring and the pi systems of these of these double bonds here. Those are those are causing different effects to occur, which significantly deshield the nucleus and really lower the shielding constant. But that's not due to the just electron withdrawing. That's due to other magnetic effects due to pi electrons. So this is kind of the basics of how chemical shifts work. We see that it's inversely related and directly proportional, sorry, directly proportional to the negative uh, of the shielding. More, uh, more electron withdrawing groups mean less shielding, which mean we're going to have a higher chemical shift.